Okay, we're down to the last but not least. The last spark of this says me. Yeah, I trust you. I have faith, Paul. I have faith. Paul Berry will be our next spark, and the title is Doctor Who, Bacon and Bad Luck, Brian. How to not waste your time on social media. Boy, do I need that one. Okay, Paul is the engagement editor at the Colorado, and he likes black coffee, craft beer. Oh. See, you're not laughing at me. I'm trying. Okay. Never mind. I'm not going to read the rest. I'm just going to say, go for it, Paul. Thank you. So every day we have a finite amount of time, uh, 86,400 seconds. And you're not sure if you have free time or if you're just forgetting something. Sometimes we spend that time uh, writing motorcycles or writing poems or uh, maybe we play with sticks or maybe we're just being a teenager and being a little goofy. But we have those choices of how to spend our time. Uh, sometimes we have to work. And sometimes, that's, uh, uh, sometimes you end up spending that time working. You're emailing, you're setting up me me meetings. Uh, framing a house, you're going to meetings, you're going to the post-meeting meetings. Anybody go to the post-meeting meetings? No, I do. Um, but one thing's true about every single day is you only get those seconds. You have that finite amount of time. And you can swap things around. You can put things in different buckets. You can decide, I'm not going to play with my kids because I really want to beat that next level of Skyrim. Uh, I, I really just want to save some time cooking, so I'm going to eat the bacon raw today. You have choices. <laughs> about how you want to do that. Uh, so, but by and large, these shortcuts end up having unintended consequences. Uh, while we're busy looking for shortcuts, everyone else is looking for ways to spend our time for us, especially in the last decade. It's gotten very, very good. Whether it's the advent of YouTube to an obsession with farming fake crops, uh, to an entire effing season of Arrested Development released all at once, even if it's not that good. Um, in the midst of it all, it's kind of weird because the house isn't cleaning itself. Um, but we get there. Uh, a lot of us in this room have something new on our job description called social media. Anybody have to do social media as part of their work? Yes? All right. Uh, and, and we are charged with these things called making things go viral, whatever that means. And people question the legitimacy of our real job because we play on Facebook all day. Uh, but uh, then they kind of make fun of you because you only got four likes or maybe 57 Twitter followers or whatever it is that uh, uh, kind of gets your goat. Uh, so the real question is, how do you make it work for you? In the time of Solomon, uh, uh, there was untold wealth in Israel, uh, but the people were upset because the taxes were very high. So they went to their king, Rehoboam. They said, King Rehoboam, uh, uh, bring down the taxes. Your father was very hard on us. Bring down the taxes. So he gets, says, I'm going to think about it. And he goes and he talks to the people, uh, his father's advisors, and they give him this great advice. Be their servant now, and they'll be your servant forever. And unfortunately, he doesn't listen to that advice. He listens to the kids he grew up with, and they say, tell them how hard you're going to be. Show them you're in charge. So he goes to the people, and he says, listen, you thought my father was hard. I'm going to be even harder. My pinky is thicker than my father's thought the Bible's earthier than we give it credit for. So, the, the, so sometimes, uh, fortunately for us, 98% of people are approaching social media the same way uh, Rehoboam approached the people. They want to they make a splash. They want to make a big deal out of themselves. And really, it, it, it's, it's the 2%. We've got a real opportunity there. Instead of making a big deal, if we're servants, if we're out there liking other people's stuff, then, then we're the ones uh, uh, kind of making people's lives better. We've talked a lot about that tonight. Uh, we get obsessed with our clout scores and things like that, but really, we, people just want to be heard. Nobody ever really said, I hate it when people reply to me on Twitter. I really don't like it when somebody likes my Instagram. Uh, it, it, people want real human interaction. Uh, they really want you to say happy birthday to them. Uh, we want to be heard. So maybe instead of sitting back and hoping other people will come to us, we go out to them. We like other people's posts. We reply to their tweets. We wish them happy birthday. Not as an ancillary piece of our strategy, but as the main thrust of it. By reaching out to others and making social media uh, about them, you're going to benefit by being cognitive cognitively associated in a positive way with the same feeling they get when you like their Pinterest or you repin it. People love that. Uh, 
It's not, and that's not rocket science. It's not some cheap trick. We've been doing it for years. When someone walks into our store and we make small talk about their kids or their garden or their latest half marathon or getting ready to run their marathon, nice work. <laughs> or, or the recipe for bacon mashed potatoes or the riots at CSU or last week's episode of Doctor Who, people are generally pretty happy to tell you what they're interested in. And like a time lord in a stolen TARDIS, they move through digital space and time to find like geeks to geek out with, be it over Matt Smith's bow tie or Applewood smoked Black Forest bacon or the latest adventures of these CSU students. So the next time you get on Twitter, shut up and listen. Reply to people. Make it about them. Because when you build an army of people who are excited about what you do, and they're excited and positive about you, when you ask for something, they'll come back. Don't waste your time on social media. Serve people. Thank you. Thank you.